Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's rest to your feet and give God the acknowledgement and the reverence that he is due. Hallelujah. Come on, with the clapping of your hands and the opening up of your mouth. Hallelujah. We give reverence to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he is the great I am, Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Jehovah Nisi. The Lord shall and will be with us forever and ever. So can you just lift up your hands, open up your mouth, and release praise in the atmosphere. Why are we releasing praise? Because we are grateful. Why are we giving him glory? Because he's been faithful. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. And we invite your presence into the room this morning. And God, we give you charge and authority to tell you, have your way in this service. Have your way in our lives. Have your way in the Holy Spirit. God, we ask that you rest, rule, and abide in the sanctuary. Father, we open up our hearts and our spirits, and we tell you, download whatever you need to do so we can be better and we can be equipped in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on one more time. Clap your hands real big. And the Bible says, shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in our mouths. Hallelujah. We came to bless the Son of God this morning. Hallelujah. The risen Savior, the mighty one the ultimate healer, the mighty and ruler and deliverer of all things that pertain to our lives. Father, we give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Whoa. The Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. Hey, the Son of God is lifted high. Come on, do me a favor. Can you give your glory in the room? Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. We give your glory in the room, Lord. Hey. Come on, from the beginning, one more time. Here we go. The Son, the Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. Hey, the Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God is oh, lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. Come on, lift your voice. We'll say no. The 
Son of God is magnified. The Son of God is magnified. The Son of God is magnified. Come on, if you believe that, everybody sing. Wonderful and glorious. His name 
when I don't understand, I'll bless you. But I'll give you glory. Because you're worthy of all praise. You're worthy of all honor. You're worthy of all glory. When you understand the importance of your worship, it will change how you approach him when you come into his presence. It's not about what has happened on this week, but it's about who he is. So do I have a few grateful people this morning that showed up in spite of God, I came to give you glory. I came to give you praise. I came to magnify you. I came to exalt you. If I press my way through the cold, if I press my way through this week, I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And I will bless his holy name. I'll give him glory. Wonderful. Glorious. The Son of God be lifted up. His name is Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Matchless is his name. Mighty is his name. Glorious is his name. So I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continuously be in my mouth. I need you to open up your mouth in just for a few seconds. Bless the name of our God. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Walk in the light. The beautiful light. Come. Brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And forget not his benefit. Has he been good to anybody? Is there anybody that know that he's worthy? Tell your neighbor, I came to give him glory. I came to give him glory. I came to give him glory. Don't worry about who's not here. Don't worry about who didn't show up. I came to give him glory. I came to give him glory. He's been too good to me. And I understand that a consistent God deserve a consistent praise. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continuously be in my mouth. Now open up your mouth and shout something to the Lord. You're wonderful. You're mighty. You're just. You're merciful. You're great. You're awesome. You're magnificent. And we give you glory. And we give you praise. For your mercy endureth forever. It's because of his mercies that we're not consumed. And his compassion that faileth not. So this morning we say, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness because morning by morning new mercy we see. Then another pin, all I have need of, your hand has provided for me. Great is thy faithfulness. Is there anybody this morning that know that God is faithful? Yeah, I can admit that there were times that I, were, I was unfaithful. But somehow he still remained faithful. And we give him glory. And we give him praise. For the Lord is worthy of all the honor and the glory and everything that's due to him. At this time, it's the privilege and an honor to have this great man of God, my friend, my brother. I don't throw that term around lightly, but my friend and my brother, Reverend, Pastor, Doctor, Prophet, 
Ryan Bishop, yeah. Buckley from New Jersey. New Brunswick, yeah, because Jersey's big. He's going to come up. Y'all know we don't tarry. But I want him to have free range and let God use him. But from Tabernacle, Baptist Church, my brother is coming up and don't sit in the seat of judgment, but open up your hearts and minds and prepare to hear a word from the Lord. And I promise you, God is going to bless your life. Amen. You know how we get down. He's not a stranger here. He's been here before. But I believe he has a word for this house. So as he comes up, I ask that you stand on your feet and receive a man of God, Reverend Ryan Buckland from Tabernacle Baptist Church, New Brunswick, New Jersey. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let our souls look up with a steadfast hope and our wills be lost. And thy Lord draw us nearer to the cross where thou hast died. Anoint me afresh and anew to speak your word. Somebody came in expecting to hear from heaven. So God, take care of the distractions around us. And give us a clear path straight from you. God, we need to hear from you this morning. Somebody's been dealing with some tough issues. And they need some direction. God, give them direction today. Lord, save somebody. Deliver somebody. Set somebody free by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we'll be so careful to give your name the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we clap our hands in the presence of our Lord? Hug somebody around you. Say, I'm so glad to see you this morning. It's so glad to see you this morning. So glad to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Well, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I am so honored and delighted to be here behind this sacred desk of God one more time. It's been about a year since I've been here, and I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. I grew up with a time where they used to sing the song, they, He didn't have to let us live, but I'm just glad to be in the service just one more time. Can you help me honor the man of God, the pastor of this house, your pastor, Dr. Tim, and, and help me. Help me, please help me honor his lovely wife and the entire family. Good to see you, good to see you. She is the queen of the house. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. My, uh, my wife sends her love and sends her greetings, and she would have been here, but our children are in basketball, so um, you got to show up to the basketball games. <laughs> Amen. Um, I preach at my church. Don't be in church all the time and miss your children's opportunities at school and um, in their activities. You got to be present for your children. Um, and uh, I have to uh, let y'all know that I can't see nobody. <laughs> These lights, I, I can't see not a soul, but I see somebody out there. So praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. If you have your Bibles in the book of Exodus, in the Old Testament, <laughs> Exodus, the, uh, Exodus chapter 20, yeah, we are, uh, y'all are a new age church, so, you know, folks don't bring Bibles to church no more, they just, they got them on their phone or on the screens, amen. And, uh, so if you don't have your Bible, you just look behind them. They're on the screens. Amen. Um, if you would stand, I think y'all are standing. <laughs> I gotta get
with my sunglasses. <laughs> don't, don't adjust the lights. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm good. I'm good. Exodus 20, verse 21. We're just going to read one verse. And it says, And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near into the thick darkness where God was. That's enough. As you take your seat, tell your neighbor, it happened in the dark. That was the wrong neighbor. Tell your other neighbor, it happened in the, in the dark. people stood afar off while Moses by himself drew near into the thick darkness where God was. Source Church, God is a mystery. Can't seem to figure him out. He's always up to something. He's always seeming to show up in the most unlikely places. He's here, he's there, and he's everywhere. You can't explain him. He's a mystery. He's what cannot be known unless he reveals it to you. You can't seem to figure him out. And if you think you have figured him out, then ultimately you really don't know him because he can't be explained. You can't put your finger on him. The oxymoronic temperament of God will always leave one in a puzzling state of being because God is always up to something, always prodding and always poking in the people's business. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He knows all. He sees all. And he's everywhere all at the same time. This is the God who knows your situation even before your situation became a situation. This is the God who created space when there was no space so that the space he created could have space to occupy his space. Yeah, that God, you can't explain him, can't figure him out. He's a mystery, I tell you. The God you can't see, but the God you can feel. The God you can't touch, but the God you can hear. The God who created something out of nothing, somebody out of nobody, and established existence out of emptiness. Come to tell somebody you can't explain him, you can't figure him out. He's a mystery. He's always up to something. This is the God who flung the moon up to illuminate his creation at night and then tossed the sun up to heat his creation by day. God is completely, unreservedly, absolutely holy with no admixture to sin, no taint of iniquity, and no hint of injustice. This is the God who is light, who said, let there be light when there was no light, to fill a world devoid of light, and he is discovered here in the text in a most unlikely place. It says here in Exodus 20 and verse 21, he's in thick darkness. Somebody say darkness. The one who created light is hanging out in utter darkness. The one who is the light of the world is hanging out in thick darkness. This is the one that 1 John 1 and 6 says God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. But here in the text, Moses discovers God hanging out in thick darkness. Moses had just come from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments, and God told him some good instructions to go tell the people to consecrate themselves, and then they would have an encounter with God and listen to God explain the law. Because I come to tell somebody, you cannot have an experience with God if you have not been in consecration first. You will never have an encounter with God if you have not had an encounter with consecration first. So people of God, stop expecting God to show up and show out if nobody's been in consecration. The glory won't come if the prayers have never left your lips. The instructions were to consecrate yourself first, and then you will have an encounter with God. So the Bible says that the people never consecrated themselves, nor did they have an encounter with God, all because a storm came, 
all because the lightning started flashing, all because the thunder started roaring, and the people, the Bible says, became terrified and became scared. And as a consequence, Source Church, when they became terrified, Moses had to leave his congregation and go by himself to approach God while the people stood afar off. The plan was for everybody to go see God and to have an encounter with God. But because of fear, Moses had to leave his members, draw near to God in the thick darkness all by himself. The instructions were for everybody to get close to God, but the plan didn't plan out the way it was planned to be planned because Moses had to leave the people that he had led for so long because of panic to approach God all by himself. Pastor, I come to share a word with you that we are sometimes pastoring people that don't deem it necessary or beneficial to have an encounter with God. We are leading people that don't, that don't feel the appropriateness or the need to get close to God and have an encounter with God Almighty. People of God, how many times have we missed an opportunity to meet God because of fear, because of frustration, and because we were too focused on our own feelings? We assume that the way it should be is the way it's been, and we stood afar off while others drew near, and we missed a moment in our lives that could have been the very moment that could have changed our lives, all because we were scared of a storm. And quite frankly, I've never in my life seen so many Christians that have been scared of so many storms. The people stood afar off because they were scared of a storm. You see, this new age Christian is scared of their own shadow. We lack faith. We lack hope. We lack confidence. We lack assurance. We lack power. We lack strength. And we lack endurance. We lack discipline. We lack fortitude. And we lack the authority and the position that we're supposed to have in a world in which we live in. You know, I grew up in a day where the church would sing, Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. But but today, Satan ain't really threatened by most Christians because Satan knows that most Christians don't have the power they say they have. Most Christians don't have the prayer life that they say they have. Most Christians don't have the anointing that they say they have because most Christians are scared of the wind that comes in your life. And I come to preach to somebody and say, the wind will come, but don't be scared. Oh, the trouble will come to your house, but don't be scared. Oh, it may come, but you can't can't be scared because greater is he that is in me. I wish I had a witness or two in this place than he that is in the world. So people of God, so instead of getting closer to God, we stay away because we are scared of the storms of life that are around us. And when we stay afar off, we miss the chance and we miss the moment to have an encounter with God. And how many of us have missed moments in our lives to have an encounter with God himself? We have allowed our personal storms to become a wedge between us and God because God knows your storm. And the storms that's raging right now in your life was not designed to keep you away from God, but it was designed to draw you closer to God because whatever storm you're in right now, God can handle it. I need to put a pen right there and you need to tell your neighbor, I don't care what it looks like, God can handle it. If you're sick, God can handle it. If you're depressed, God can handle it. If you're broke, God can handle it because God can handle your situation. God can handle your problem. God can handle your family. God can handle your marriage. God can handle your ministry. God can handle your church. God can handle your job. Whatever it is, I come to tell somebody, God can handle it. So don't miss your moment with God to have a good encounter. Because blind Bartimaeus would still be blind if he didn't have an encounter with God. The woman with the issue of blood will still be bleeding today if she did not have an encounter with God. 
the man at the pool of Bethesda would still be crippled if she did not have an encounter with God. Lazarus would still be dead, buried in his grave if he did not have an encounter with God. And my soul personally would be lost if I did not have an, an encounter with God because you've been sick before and God healed you. You've been broke before and God made a way for you. You've been lost before and God found you. You've been depressed before and God soothed your mind. You've been down before and God brought you up. You've been fired before and God supplied your needs because many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord will deliver us out of them all. This ain't the first time you're going to go through this and it's not going to be the last time you're going to go through this but if I know God's history like I know it, if he brought me through then, he's more than well able to bring me through now because God can handle it. I need you to tell somebody God can handle it. Your storm, your storm was never designed to push you away, but your storm was designed to draw you closer to him. So I come to tell somebody, don't miss your encounter just because of a storm in your life. The old preacher used to put it like this, I've seen the lightning flash and, I, and I've heard the thunder roll. I've seen sin, sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul, but I heard a voice from heaven bidding me to still fight on because he promised never to leave you, never to leave you alone and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, the people stood afar off because of a storm. And Moses had to go see God all by yourself. I know the church just got over a fast, and uh, I hope everybody uh, was included in that fast. But if even if everybody wasn't included, sometimes you can't rely on your brother or your sister to your left and your right. Uh, you got to go for yourself. And I, I don't care if the praise team is singing good, if they ain't singing. I, I didn't come for the praise team. I came to give God the glory all by myself. Uh, and if y'all don't say amen, if y'all don't shout while I'm preaching, I'll preach to myself <laughs> by myself. I'll get happy all by myself because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I don't need a crowd. I don't need a church. But every now and then, the time I was in the grocery store and I swiped my card and it said approved and my hand went up and said thank you Jesus because I didn't know if it was going to be approved or not and I know I can get a witness or two uh, that check engine light came on and God gave you the, the right words to say to your car because there will come time in everyone's life where you have to speak to a thing all by yourself and God will take care of it. But look where Moses finds God. Finds God in the thick darkness. Lord, have mercy. I'm about to get high in my own supply this morning. The God of light is here in the text found in the dark. And I know some of you may think that you do your best work in the dark. Mm -mm. But there's nothing like God doing his best work in the dark. Paul and Silas were in jail singing and praising, but at midnight, things changed because it happened in the dark. Jo jo Jacob wrestled with an angel of God all night long until daybreak because it happened in the dark. Nicodemus visited Jesus at night to discuss some spiritual matters, and it happened in the dark. Judas Iscariot was betrayed, Jesus with a kiss leading to his arrest, and it happened in the dark. But on a hill called Calvary, the Bible says that darkness fell over the land from noon until three in the afternoon because it happened in the dark. And I come to tell somebody, I don't care how dark your situation is, God can handle it right in the dark because God was found 
in the thick darkness. Your life may be dark right now, but God is right there in the midst of your darkness. I, I, I grew up in uh, Middletown, New Jersey, and um, I went to high school there at Middletown High School South, and uh, we had a graphics art teacher named Mr. Edward Mitchell, a uh, big, big, big guy, and um, in the graphics art um, class, he taught us how to take photographs of things, but back in the 90s when I went to school, um, uh, they had what they called a dark room. And uh, in the dark room, you would take your, your negatives of what you took as a picture and put it in the dark room. Um, and you could not expose your negative to the light because it would ruin it. But you had to develop your negative in the dark room. I come to tell somebody, uh, God is developing you in the dark room. And you, you're wondering why your life is so dark right now. Uh, but I got good news. If your life is dark right now, you ought to give God praise because he's developing you in the dark. He's encouraging you in the dark. And your negatives will become positives when God puts it in the dark room. Because sooner or later, after a while, by by and by, the light will shine again. And I don't care how dark your situation is. Moses found God right in the dark. So you don't have to search far. You don't have to go looking for God. Wherever you are, God is right there. There. If I go to the highest mountain, God is there. If I go to the lowest valley, God is there. The old folks said it like this. Have you any rivers that seem uncrossable? Have you any valleys that you cannot tunnel through? But I come to remind somebody, God specializes in things that seem impossible. And he'll do what no other power holds. Holy Ghost power can do. Can you grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, it may be dark, but God is found in the dark and the light will shine again. You will smile again. You will rejoice again. You will laugh again. You will dance again because God is not through blessing you. It's dark, but hold on. Just a little while longer, God will see you through. He will open the door. He will open the window. And the light will shine again. The light will shine again. So I just came to encourage somebody today just to hold on a little longer. I don't care how dark it is in your life. Moses approached the thick darkness. And when he got to the thick darkness, God was right there. And your situation seems so dark right now. But guess what? God is right there. I don't care what it is in your life. God is right there. Every head bowed, every eye closed, Lord. For my brother, for my sister, whatever it is, the situation that they cried about last night, let them know that you are found in the darkest of situations. You are found right there. All they have to do is just hold on to your unchanging hand. Because you will make everything all right. I know the dark, the darkness gets scary, the darkness gets lonely, but God, you are right there. You are right there. Encourage God, my brother, encourage my sister. Let them know that weeping is only for a night. Joy comes in the morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. the name of the Lord.
everybody know that he is in the dark? Yeah. Do we have some real folks that can say that life has served me some difficulties? Yeah. But if truth be told, even in those most difficult moments, God was there. The old folks used to say, when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I got a testimony. Anybody got a testimony this morning? That he's never left you and neither has he forsaked you, but he's always been right there. He's always been right there. And it's something because we have an ideology of thinking that, that when life is bad, God has forgotten about us. And the first thing we do is we look for excuses to quit God. But I said something the other day and I said, stop looking for excuses to be disloyal to God. So when life is happening, even when you think he's not there, he's there. Songwriter says he's there all the time, waiting patiently in line. He, he's been there all the time. Clap your hands if that word has blessed you this morning. In the dark, in the dark. I'm just so grateful to God that even when life has served me lemons, somehow he still allowed me to survive and come out stronger than what I was when I went in. It doesn't, it, it don't take God doing something new. I just think about all the stuff that he's already done. And I think sometimes we just have to take a moment and allow our memory to serve us notice of just how good God has really been. I know I'm not the only person, but has he really been good to anybody this morning? Is your testimony that he's been in the dark with you? Yeah. He's been in the darkest places. Sleeping in my car, he was there. No money in the bank, he was there house was in foreclosure, he was there. Bad relationships, he was there. Body racking with pain, but he was there. But one of the things Reverend Buckman said was, it is your sacrifices for your expectation of what you're looking for God to do that shows how he shows up. So in other words, you got to show up for God in order for him to show up for you. Yeah, you got to make the sacrifice. Everybody else was running, but Moses was running into it. Is there anybody that just want to run into God this morning? Yeah, we praise him. There may be somebody that doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You may not know him. This is your opportunity to get to know him. Yeah, I just want to praise him. Sometimes you have moments and you think about your life. I'm trying to move on. But even in my darkest hours, he was there. Friends acting up, family acting strange, money acting funny, but he was there. When others left, he, he was there. He was there. And because he was there, I just want to say thank you. Yeah, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your consistency. In spite of been just that good yeah in the dark it happened in the dark 
Yeah. I didn't realize I was delivered from depression, but it happened in the dark. It was in those moments where I thought I wouldn't come through that I, I came through. It happened in the dark. Like he said, the, the old school, and that's old school when they develop films that way. I forgot all about that. Or even the Polaroid. You took the picture and it was dark and you, you shook it. Anybody remember that? You were shaking until it was developed. Sometimes God got to just shake you in order to make you. It happened in the dark. Yeah, it, it happened in the dark. You, you had any dark moments in your life? This ain't a moment for you to be bougie. This is a moment for you to be real. Yeah, you might need to just shake yourself, shake your neighbor, just touch them, say, listen, it happened in the dark. Yeah. We ain't always had it together, but somehow he pulled us together. It happened in the dark, yeah. Yeah. You was at the club when you got convicted. It happened in the dark. Yeah, you was just out there partying, just having a good time, and something just told you, you know good and well you don't supposed to be here. It happened in the dark. I used to always ask myself the question, God, how in the world you show up at the moments that I don't need you to show up? You know, I, I don't need you to remind me here why, why I'm here. No, let, let me have my fun. Anybody else been convicted while you was having fun? Yeah, you having fun. You about to put one up in the air. Uh, you, you trying to preach. Your friends don't want to hear that. Everybody trying to toast. Everybody trying to get tore up. But here you are. You just get convicted. You get drunk. You start preaching. Happened in the dark. Bless the Lord again for that word from Reverend Buckland. I thank God for him. I thank God for him showing up. He was talking before he came out. And um, he told me, he said, bruh, we went out last night and got dinner. He said, I was sick this morning. I don't know what was wrong with me. He said, I started to call you and just tell you, you don't have to preach. But somehow he found his strength in the dark. And he made his way out this morning. And we just want to thank and praise God for that. Clap your hands one more time and give our God some praise. As you prepare to give and you prepare to, to sow, you know the ways that we have to give. I'm going to let um, Lady Fee come up so she can do that because I normally mess all the giving ways up, but I won't do that this morning. So as you prepare to give, and also remember as you prepare that on next month we're having Pillow Talk, February the 10th at 6.30 p.m. Listen, make sure you register. It's, it's going to be fire. Bring your questions. Write them down. Drop them in the box. It's going to be real conversation for real people. Amen. Amen. So our singles, our married couples, whatever, meet us here. Register so we can know who's going to be here so we can prepare so you can eat. We're going to laugh. We're going to have fun. But we're going to have real conversation. Amen. I'm excited about it. You excited about it? Amen. So Pillow Talk, that's our next coming up event. Listen, next Sunday, make sure you invite somebody to church. And if you don't see nobody here today, your brothers and sisters that you normally see, check on them. Make sure they are right. Make sure they didn't freeze to death last night. Amen. People struggle with cold. Amen. But make sure you bring everybody, invite somebody. Let's pack this place out. I pray that God don't come in the wintertime because a lot of us are going to miss him. Lord, please don't let it be cold. God bless y'all. I love you. I love you. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Put your hands together in the sanctuary on this morning. It happened in the dark. It had to happen. Your storm wasn't designed to push you away, but to draw you closer to him. Don't miss your moment to have an encounter with God. God is developing you in the dark. You will shine again. It happened in the dark.
If you believe that, one more time in the building, put your hands together. Amen. Amen. And like Pastor Tim, Dr. Tim was starting to say, we have five ways to give on this morning. You can hit our cash app at dollar sign source church SC. Amen. You can raise your hand if you don't have an envelope. And Sister Yvonne will be glad to serve you. Um, and you can give here in person. Uh, Deacon Landy, you can give here in person. <laughs> Amen. You can also go to uh, download the GiveLify app. And you can go there and give. If you put in the Source Church, you will definitely see our logo there. Or you can simply go to our Facebook page, and it's a link there. And you go to the link and go to Give Online in Jesus' name. Um, and I think, yeah, that's all of our ways to give on today. Uh, can y'all roll with the announcements if we have any on this morning? Yes, we are still doing our capital campaign, y'all. It's coming. It's coming. We're going to burn the mortgage to this facility, you guys. I am excited about that, and you should be too. Amen. We are going to own this facility, and we thank God. It's nothing but the goodness and mercy of our dear Lord Jesus, and we thank him for that. Amen. So continue to send your donations, or you can get donations from others in Jesus' name. Yes, that's you can do that too, because by any means necessary, we're going to pay this facility off. Amen. And this is our second week. Um, we're going into our next 10 days of prayer and fasting. Um, the fruits and vegetables, you know, almost took us out. Amen. But dear God, here we are standing today, and we bless you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> we started on Thursday with our, um, we moved on. We're going to be doing our, our financial fast. You know, um, yeah, Pastor Tim be throwing shade to the ladies like he don't be tearing up that Amazon app. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah, he always calling us out. But I'm so grateful, you know, that God has, you know, uh, given me a little discipline during this time of consecration and uh, fasting. Amen. So let's continue to remain faithful to our uh, next 10 days of prayer and fasting in Jesus' name. Amen. And like Pastor Tim also said, we have our pillow talk coming up. If you have questions that you don't want to, you know, speak out loud when you come here, you can definitely put it in the ask it basket um, that we'll have at the back. We don't have it today, but it'll be there next Sunday. Amen. So bring your questions. Nothing is off limits. Y'all remember we did that, um, what was it we did during the pandemic? Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to leave that right there. If y'all saw it, y'all already know. Those that know, they know. Amen. So bring your questions, your ideas, and whatever you are interested in, and it will be addressed in Pillow Talk, singles and married couples, in Jesus' name. All right? So what's next? Oh, that's it. There you have it. If you've already made your, um, gave your tithe and your offering, we appreciate you. Thank you to our online community. We truly thank you and bless God for you and your uh, your giving on this morning and always supporting this ministry. Amen. Do we have any first-time visitors today? Amen. We have a first-time visitor. Yes, yes. Amen. We ain't going to ask you to stand up and give your name. We ain't going to do you like that. We ain't gonna, but we are so happy to have you on today. And please come back and visit us. We are so grateful. Thank you for gracing us with your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Any other announcements? If that's it, y'all, let's ride. Y'all know how we do. We don't be long, but we be strong. Amen. <laughs> so now, Father, we thank you, God, for time that has been well spent with you, Lord. God, we honor you in this place on this morning. There's no one like you, Father. Thank you for your grace and your mercy toward us, Father. Lord God, we ask as we leave this, pres this place with never your presence, Father, go with us and keep us all covered under your blood. Remember this offering on this morning, Lord God. It will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, Father God. Lord, we honor you and we just bless your holy and powerful and righteous name. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray. Let every heart say amen.